Tesla Model S Plaid world record of 0 to 60 in less than 2 seconds is causing some controversy after Motor Trend had to make some unusual accommodations to Tesla during their test. Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to explain what really happened. In less controversial Tesla news, it looks like a German government, yeah, is in talks with Tesla to do something that many people have been suggesting for years, but is it good for Tesla? Bugatti may have a new owner, which will almost guarantee it will be going fully electric, a second Chinese EV brand is cleared to expand to Europe, Volkswagen's ID4 all-wheel drive version is already best at one very important thing, and all-electric pickup truck startup Lordstown Motors continues to confuse everyone in a very annoying way. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the wonderful world of electric cars, well, you came to the right place. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. The refreshed Tesla Model S, including the Plaid version, was unveiled earlier this year and the deliveries have started last week with the big kickoff event. It is the first production car to do a few things like to feature the steering wheel yoke or not to feature any stocks, including the gear shifter. I got to experience all of them a few days ago and I made a couple of videos about it. They are up on my channel right now. but the biggest first of the Model S Plaid was its 0 to 60 time. It is under 2 seconds and that's where some controversy began. And I know you're asking Alex, what is it like to experience Plaid 0 to 60 under 2 seconds? I wouldn't know. I did not experience Plaid simply because apparently I am too fragile. But when I did experience, you know, the super slow ludicrous Model S, I got nauseous and I had a headache for like a few hours. You know, when I want to get an instant headache plus some nausea for a few hours, all I have to do is look into my comment section and I don't even have to get a whiplash. So I let my young and unbreakable production assistant Michael do the launches with David, the owner of the car, while I was running the camera with my feet safely planted next to my walker. But a lot of people in the Tesla and general EV community were asking for an independent test to see if the car really goes 0 to 60 under 2 seconds because none of the attempts during the delivery event made that time. Well, the time has come and the motor trend has finally got a chance to do it. Seems simple enough. All you need is a stopwatch, a handheld flag and a piece of a road. Right? Wrong. Apparently it wasn't that simple and just like with almost everything Tesla, it caused some controversy. So what really happened? For the answer to that question, we turn to the Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Flow. The Home X5 is a great and durable home charger that allows you to schedule, monitor and optimize your charging via a mobile app with E24-7 support. Find our exclusive $150 discount code in the description of this video. And by Neo Charge, check out the Smart Splitter, a device that can charge two cars at the same time without spending a ton of money on rewiring your home. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. All right, Tom, so you're going to have to explain this to me because I remember back in the day when I was in junior high and I was running sprints, it was very simple. You know, uh, the coach would blow a whistle, start the clock and I start running. And then as soon as I cross the line, boom, that's my time. How are things so different now when we replace, you know, junior high schoolers with uh, Teslas? Well, that was a simpler time, Alex. <laughs> Imagine today if, uh, you know, your mom ran out and pushed you right before you were about to take off and begin the race. See, all of auto manufacturers are trying to get that edge to shave tenths of a second off of their, their times. So, you know, the, the zero to 60 isn't always zero to 60. Uh, let me explain a little bit what we're talking about here with Motor Trend and the Model S Plaid. Sure, they came up with a number of like uh, 1.98 seconds in their quote unquote zero to 60 run, but that doesn't tell the whole story. A couple things happen here that we need to talk about. First of all, Tesla made, um, told Motor Trend, look, if you wanna do this, you have to do it under our conditions on our track, you can't just take the car, we're gonna tell you exactly how it gets done. So uh, the track that they took them to, they were on a prepped surface. 
they pour this stuff down called VHT. It's, it's, it's the synthetic compound that's kind of like glue. So it, it allows the vehicle to have excellent traction when taking off. I mean, you don't find that on any roads. So that was one of the advantages that they had. Another thing that they did was they used rollout. All right, so that's what I actually wanted to ask you. And it looks like, you know, uh, not, not only my mom had to push me off of the line, but also glue my shoes so I can, you know, uh, stick to the ground faster. And actually that, that would have that been great. That would have made me such a much cooler kid in, in, in junior high. All right, but enough about the simpler times. All right, tell me about the rollout because I remember you wrote an article about it a, a couple of months ago and this, this makes no sense to me. Well, rollout, Alex, isn't unusual. A lot of manufacturers actually use rollout when they're testing cars, and a lot of car magazines use it also. So that in itself isn't a problem. But there's a couple things that Tesla does with their rollout that I find a little unusual. First of all, when they give you their zero to 60 times, they only quote the cars using rollout on their performance versions. They don't with all the other versions of the car, so it makes their performance versions look faster in comparison to their other cars than they actually really are. So what is rollout? Rollout is the vehicle gets a one foot head start before the clock starts, meaning um, the vehicle starts one foot be behind the line that triggers the clock to start counting. So it's actually been moving before the, the official time starts. And in that one foot, very fast cars like the Model S Plaid can get up to about six miles an hour. So this zero to 60 time of 1.98 seconds was actually a six to 60 time. Uh, and they still call it a zero to 60 time. So as I said, that in itself, it doesn't break any rules as long as who's ever doing the testing notes, look, this was this figure was reached with rollout, with an asterisk, and Tesla does use that on their website. I just find it a little odd that they only use rollout for their performance vehicles, it, and it kind of makes those vehicles look like they're much faster than what they are. All right, uh, I, again, that kind of blew my mind when I, when, I, when I read your articles that it is not really zero to 60. Uh, but a lot of them do it and, and I guess we just have to get used to it. But at the end of the day, it still, you know, looks like Motor Trend did perform a regular test, just like if anybody would take it to a regular track and it still became the fastest production car in the world. Um, and and that's, that, that there's, there's something to be said about that. Absolutely. All props to Tesla. This car is brutally fast. When they used, when they tested it on regular asphalt with um, no VHT and without rollout, they recorded a zero to 60 time of 2.28 seconds. That is crazy fast. I mean, the fastest zero to 60 time car that I've driven was the, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S and Motor Trend clocked that one at 2.4 seconds. So, you know, it's, it's faster than the top of the line uh, Taycan Turbo S. Uh, 2.28 seconds is a monster. Tesla ought to be commended. It's just that the, the fact that they, they were, un, they're so concerned about getting it down to under two seconds that they're willing to kind of bend the rules to do that. They don't need to do that. The car's fantastic. It's incredibly fast. They should just celebrate it for what it is. Now, the new remods, uh, when it goes in production, what used to be Concept 2, is going to beat Tesla, looks like, with, with that timing 0 to 60. Should we count them in? Because you know, obviously they're only going to produce like 150 of them and it's a $2 million car. Or should they be in the completely separate category? It's a production car, even though it's low volume. I think you have to count it in. I mean, we've always counted in the the Bugattis and Lamborghinis that were limited limited runs. Uh, you know, if if you can build a car that goes faster than two seconds, zero to sixty, you deserve to have the crown. But that saying that doesn't take anything away from what Tesla has accomplished here. You know, I mean. Uh, there's a big difference in $130,000 for the Model S and what the Remac 
is going to cost. So, you know, um, like I said, all props to Tesla. This is a fantastic accomplishment and they deserve the credit. And in case if you're thinking, boy, Tom should have his own YouTube channel. Well, he does. As a matter of fact, I put the link to it in the description of this video. So don't forget to subscribe. The next Tesla story has less drama, but it's still very good and important. Tesla is in talks with the German government to open their superchargers to the rest of the automakers per German's Minister of Transportation. First, I should mention that it's much easier to get it done technically in Europe, since Tesla is using the standard CCS connector there, which is what all other EVs are using as well. In the US, it would be much harder since Tesla is using their own, though I have to admit that I like Tesla's like a thousand times better. It's compact and it's slick, it slides right in with ease, with CCS, I find myself wrestling with a thick cable and a lot of times the cable wins, which I guess means I need to hit the gym more often. But the big question is, should Tesla actually do it? There has been lines once again reported at many popular supercharger locations in the last few weeks. So if you add more cars that have access to those, that would be a disservice to the current Tesla owners. Speaking of the brands that will be getting access to the DC fast charging networks, uh, the upcoming Audi e-tron GT will get three free years of Electrify America charging, just like Lucid and the ID4, which I have been enjoying greatly. Now, Mercedes EQS owners will get the same deal except for that last year. That's right, Mercedes EQS owners will only get two years instead of three of the same free service from Electrify America. Come on, Mercedes. Don't you want to be as cool as the other kids? Let's talk about the Remots again, as I've mentioned them before in my conversation with Tom, because they are the brand that may be taking over the 0 to 60 crown from Tesla this year when delivery start of their 2 million plus dollar hypercar Nivera. And there are a couple of very exciting news here to share. First, there are reports that Remots will be going public next year, which is great news. But most importantly, Remots will be taking over Bugatti with their existing existing partner Porsche, 55% will belong to Remots and 45% will belong to Porsche. Now that all but guarantee that Bugatti will be going electric, but I'm not sure what Remots is going to get out of this. They're obviously not interested in Bugatti's gas tech and they already have a better car than them. So is it just the name? Though I might have to say that it may be just worth getting the name because people still don't know how to pronounce theirs. Welcome to Rimac Automobili. And he really does know how to pronounce that name because the company was named after him. Let's talk about NIO as it becomes a second Chinese EV brand to sell their cars in Europe. They just got approval for their all-electric SUV ES8 to go in production. NIO will be building service centers, charging locations, and my favorite, battery swapping stations, which is still the only way to get a fully charged battery in as fast of a time as you would to fill up your gas car with a full tank of gas. This is the Chinese EV invasion that Sandy Monroe was talking about a while back during one of his regular monthly appearances on this channel. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the Chinese are going to come in and, um, and it'll be just like, I mean, this is going to be a repeat of when the Japanese started bringing cars into the US. I should mention that the first EV startup out of China to start selling their cars in Europe was the Xpeng Motors, the sponsor of this channel. They have started selling their all-electric SUV G3 in Norway earlier this year. Deliveries for NIO ES8 will start in September and much like Xpeng Motors, they will start with Norway as well. Volkswagen ID4 All-Wheel Drive Pro is not on the market yet, but it has already got a very important title. It will be the cheapest all-wheel drive electric vehicle in the United States. This is based on the starting MSRP price of $43,675. Now, obviously, if your uncle owns a Ford dealership and you can get your Mustang Mach it half off. Listen, how you get your discounts is really none of my business, but this one is based on the MSRP. Now, Ford Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive is the second least expensive all-wheel drive electric vehicle in the United States at $45,595, 
before the incentives. As you probably know, I have recently got myself the ID4 first edition and I will release an update video about how it's been going in the next few weeks. Last week we talked about how Lordstown Motors has announced that they've looked down into their wallet and it was getting kind of empty and even though they'll still be able to deliver some of its first production batch trucks, they will need to raise more money to go on into the next year. Now this week the CEO Steve Burns, who's been on this channel several times, along with company CFO, have resigned. Now right after that, company's president Rich Schmidt said that Lordstown has dug in between its couch cushions for some lost change and it does have enough cash on hand to get through next May and enough binding orders to keep production going through 2022. But then later in the week, the company has filed a statement with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which apparently they weren't aware is a public document. And I'm only assuming that because the document said that the company has, and I quote, no binding purchase orders or commitments from customers. Well, Rich, I guess I know who's going to be the next company's executive to resign. Now, it's unfortunate that Lordstown Motors is turning into a similar story to Nikola as it gives bad names to all electric car startups, but you know what? I'd rather have it happen now than later. Don't forget to become a premium member of this channel. All you have to do is click on the join button and you will have access to all of our bonus materials, including this video where we have tested the Tesla Model S Plaid 0 to 60. Well, I wasn't there, I have to admit. I was safely planted on the ground, but my assistant Michael and the owner of the car, David, we're having a good time. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.